Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, Lonnie Bunch, discussed the creation of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. Here's a portion of the program. Once we got the spot on the mall, because that was the big deal, would we get the spot on the mall? And then once we had it, Kinshasa Holman Conwell, who's my deputy director, and I spent a lot of time thinking, what should this museum be? So many people came up to us. Oh, should the museum look African? I wasn't sure what that meant. Um, should the museum look like slavery? What I knew is I wanted a museum that spoke of spirituality, resiliency, and uplift. I wanted a museum that would be the first green museum on the mall that it was really important to say this would be a lead gold building. But also, what I wanted was a building that had a dark color, because I wanted people to realize that America has often undervalued or under, still at less than understanding the African American experience, that there's always been a dark presence in America. And I thought it'd be important on the mall to, to be not too subtle. Um, and to really make sure that this presence was on the mall, and that's what I tried to do. Well, every other building on the mall is white. Well, the best part of this was the regulatory agencies, right? They are. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the regulatory agencies had to approve this, and at one point we took the, this design to the regulatory agencies, and they finally said, we think we accept it, but Lonnie, could you do one thing? Could you make the building white? <laughs> so I said to the regulatory agency, I said, if you will stand in front of the New York Times and Washington uh, Post and say the African American Museum has to be in a white building, then I'll do it. <laughs> and Kinshasa remembers, he did one of those, never mind. <laughs> now, tell us about the design, the bronze colored panels that are called the corona where what is the root of that design and how did the corona come about because that's to me that's what makes this building the eiffel tower the great wall of china the kind of thing where if you're standing on the corner looking at this building i know where i am I think that it's a combination. Like any uh, origin story, there are a bunch of different stories. Um, <laughs> the idea of this came from one of two places. Either it came from conversations Kinshasa and I had where we saw pictures of black women whose hands in prayer were at this angle. The architect argues that it comes from a Yoruba piece that he saw. So I'm not sure where it came from, but I am sure that how we got the corona. Because basically what happened was, once we decided we would do this bronze corona, we realized that you couldn't have solid bronze, that you had to puncture it in some ways because solid bronze was too reflective. And the architect said, well, what we'll do is just use a computer and make holes. Well, I paid too much money just for holes. <laughs> uh, so what we did is we went down to New Orleans and Charleston and took pictures of all that ironwork that enslaved craftspeople did, and that's what's on the entire building. So the building is a homage to the fact that so much of America was built by people we'll never know. And so every time I see the building, I do see the African American experience, but I see all those laborers that have been left out of history. To watch the rest of this program, visit our website, booktv.org, and search for Lonnie Bunch or the title of his book, A Fool's Errand, using the box at the top of the page.